Good morning to one and all. The great scientist Albert Einstein once said, intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease at death. Brain Tracy, a Canadian-American motivational public speaker and author of self-development books says, continuous learning is the minimum requirement for success in any field. Yesterday, we all have gathered here for the same purpose of intellectual growth or call it as continuous learning. Recently, two weeks back, when our regional director Dr. T. P. Renkamuthi was having a discussion with the faculty regarding academic issues, had felt that we all have been teaching, but we need to be motivated. We also need to learn higher dimensions of knowledge and also values and ethics. We need continuous input to have that burning desire to disseminate the same. That's the idea behind this initiative, Pragna VTU. The name of the series, Pragna, is a Sanskrit word meaning highest and purest form of wisdom, intelligence and knowledge. The state of wisdom which is higher than the knowledge obtained by reasoning and inference. The purpose of starting the series of lecture is as indicated in the meaning of Pragna, that is to get motivated and to impart values, ethics and moreover to bring higher dimension of thinking and knowledge amongst the faculty today. Now, I request our Billard Regional Director, Dr. T. P. Renkamurthy, to welcome the gathering. Welcome to all. So, very warm welcome to our distinguished Vice-Chancellor, esteemed Registrar, Dean, Resource Person and all our esteemed professors who are grace us with their presence today. We are deeply honored to have you at these special occasions. The idea of Prajna, the video lecture series, was conceived recently. When this idea was put forth, our Honorable Vice Chancellor has accepted immediately and insists us to float the program Prajna video. Prajna video was contributed by Dr. Yatish Chandra, Associate Professor, Department of MBA. Thank you, Professor. Our beloved Vice Chancellor, Professor S. Vidya Sankar, sir, sir, your vision, leadership, the dedications, and unwarming commitment to academic excellency was proposed our university <coughs> to new heights. Your guidance and supports have fostered in the environment that encourage the innovations and critical thinking and pursuit of knowledge. We are truly grateful our inaugural address of Prajna VTU. We extend our warmest welcome to you, sir. <laughs> our esteemed Executive Council member, Dr. Krishna Goda, sir. Sir, always support regarding the implement our campus facilities. We extend our warm welcome to you, sir. Our esteemed Executive Council member, Mr. Rakesh sir, has taken the initiative Center for Online Education. They extend our warm welcome to you, sir. Our D esteemed D with you, Dr. Sadashiva Goda, sir. Your expertise, efficiency, and dedications are instrumental in shaping our university success. They extend our warmest welcome to you, sir. Our esteemed Registrar, Dr. B. Ramaswamy, sir, you are the administrative head of our university, ensuring the smooth functioning of our academic program and managing our resources and facilities to conduct the environment for teaching, learning and research. So we extend our sincere welcome to you, sir. Our esteemed Registrar Evaluation, Dr. T. S. Srinivas, sir, you are ensuring the smooth functioning of our examination process, managing our resources at the higher, higher end, and we are bringing a lot of reform in the examinations and PhD process. We extend our hearty welcome to you, sir. Our extend warm welcome to finance officer with you, sir Srimati M. A. Sapna, madam. Welcome you, madam, once again. Our esteemed professors who are present here and also join online, 
reflect our shared beliefs in the power of education and your support for our academic community. You are extend our warmest welcome to you all. So once again, the warm welcome to our STM Vice Chancellor, Register, all our distinguished guests. Your presence here today is a true honor. You are grateful for your continuous support and guidance. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now it's my duty to welcome you to this program. Welcome, sir. American writer John J. Chapman says, Benevolence alone will not make a teacher, nor will learning alone do it. The gift of teaching is a peculiar talent and implies a need that a craving in the teacher himself. Yes, our university is blessed with one such teacher who has a lot of craving to impart knowledge and to transform the lives of students and faculty. As a reason, he is bringing a lot of reformations and restructuring to the university who is none other than our Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Dr. S. Vidya Shankar sir. Now I request our Honorable Vice-Chancellor to give inaugural address of Pragna VTU. Good morning to one and all who are present here. The Honorable Executive Council member, Dr. Krishna Gowda, the Dean of the University, Dr. B. Sadesh Gowda, the Principal of Vidyavartaka College of Engineering, the other dignitaries, invitees, participants, and all other special invitees. It's a proud privilege for me to be participate in this Education for Industry, the lecture series of lecture series on the topic Education for Industry 4.0. Education for Industry 4.0 refers to the educational approaches and strategies aims, aimed at preparing individuals for the changing demands of the fourth industrial revolution. Industry 4.0 is characterized by the integration of digital technology, automation, artificial intelligence, and the Internet of Things into various industries, leading to significant transformation in manufacturing services and other sectors. To ensure the individuals are equipped with necessary skills and knowledge for Industry 4.0, to adapt and evolve. Here are some of key considerations for education in the context of Industry 4.0. Number one, emphasize STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEM subjects form the foundation for many industries 4.0 technologies. Encouraging students to develop strong skills in these areas will prepare them for careers in fields like robotics, data analytics, software development, and engineering. Number two, fostering digital literacy. Digital literacy is crucial in Industry 4.0, where technology is pervasive, Education should focus on teaching students how to effectively use digital tools, navigate online platforms, and understand concepts such as cybersecurity and data privacy. Number three, develop critical thinking and problem solving skills. This is what most important today. The industry expects that to industry 4.0 expects the graduates who have critical thinking, who have knowledge of the critical thinking and problem solving skills. Industry 4.0 brings complex challenges that require individuals to think critically and solve problems creatively. That is what the university is also gearing up to create a, uh, gearing up to create a labs which makes the students to critically think, think critically and solve problems. That's why now we are planning to introduce a kits so that students can use those kits, think critically and solve problems. 
when we are now in a mode of conducting competitions to create a competitions in students at students level to make this critical thinking and problem solving an important aspect for the growth of an engineering students or to become completely skilled engineers. Education should incorporate activities and projects that promote these skills such as hands-on experiments, group work and real-world problem-solving scenarios. Promote adaptability and lifelong learning as technology advances rapidly. The jobs and skills required today may become absolute tomorrow. Education should emphasize adaptability and growth mindset, encouraging individuals to embrace lifelong learning and develop the ability to quickly upskill or reskill as needed. Number five, integrate exper experiential learning and industry partnerships. Experiential learning opportunities such as internships, apprenticeships, and collaboration with industry partners offer students practical experience and exposure to real-world applications of Industry 4.0 technologies. These partnerships can also help bridge the gap between academia and industry, ensuring education aligned with industry needs. Keeping this thing in mind to bring the students or to expose the students to the industrial aspects. That's why the VTU is planning to bring the industry into the campus, a new culture. Many consultancy works of industry we are now taking started with machine. Machining in the mechanical department, now we are planning to bring many consultancy works to the university so that the universities will expose its students to the real life problems of the industry as well as solving capacity and critical thinking. Number six, incorporate entrepreneurship and innovation. Industry 4 Point provides opportunities for innovation and entrepreneurship. Education should encourage entrepreneurial mindsets and provide students with the skills to identify and pursue new opportunities in emerging fields. Encourage ethical and social responsibility with the increasing, in, with the increasing influence of technology. Education should address ethical considerations and promote social responsibility. Students should understand the impact of their work on society privacy concerns, ethical use of data, and the potential consequences of automation on employment. Number eight, enhance soft skills. While technological skills are crucial, soft skills are like communication, collaboration, teamwork, and leadership remain essential in the Industry 4.0 era. Education should incorporate, incorporate opportunities to develop these skills through group projects, presentations, and interpersonal interactions. Now, continuous assessment and feedback. Frequent assessment and feedback mechanisms help track individual progress and identify areas for improvement. This iterative approach encourages students to reflect on their learning and make necessary adjustments to succeed in the Industry 4.0 landscape. Teacher training and professional development educators play a vital role in preparing students for Industry 4.0. Teacher training programs should provide opportunities for professional development, ensuring educators are well-versed in the latest technologies, teaching methods, and industry needs. In this area also, VTU is taking care to train the teachers and create a master trainers by using the Resourceful person from company uh, from well-established corporates like l and or Coursera, or even uh, Infosys, NASCAM, and prepare our teachers to train our future stu students who has to face the future world of Industrial Revolution 4.0. By implementing these strategies, education system can better equip individuals with skills, knowledge, and mindset needed to thrive in the dynamic and technology-driven world of Industry 4.0. With these words, 
I thank the organizers for having given me an opportunity to share the thoughts, what I have in mind, where we have to reach, what are our visions, and how to achieve those visions and missions which are set so that the students of our university are industry ready to face the Industrial Revolution 4.0, wherein when that, in that angle already, yesterday or day before yesterday, I had a meeting with our Board of Studies Chairman, and today we are now uh, meeting at 4 o'clock to along with our Board of Studies Chairman and some special invitees and with industry fellow, what are the industry ready subjects that are need to be included in our content so that the industry students can be made. Not only the introduction of the concept, but what is the real world problem of the industry that can be taught, whereas we call it as an experiential learning to expose the students to the real problems of the industry, where industrially, industry people, they can contribute a lot by providing a content that can be incorporated ever in, in our course curriculum or syllabus, wherein the students are exposed even before entering into the industry. As we all know that today, even with all this, Whatever the students study tomorrow after the completion of the fourth year, when they go out of the university, they don't know what is the technology that is prevailing there. I recently read an article that all these days it is CT, MRI. Today there is a scanning of eye. With the scanning of eye, yesterday I read it in a newspaper from an agency. With the scanning of eye, the entire body can be seen apex, in effect. That means transparently the functioning of the entire body can be seen. Those days, that means to say that the technology will not be static. It is a dynamic. The technology keeps on changing. Many times, many way, many places, I always tell my students that those days have gone wherein when we were there as a students, the technology remains to be a static. Then, when we used to study, when whatever we study during four years of our coursework, coursework, regular coursework of engineering, that was sufficient. But today it is not so. It is like doctors. Doctors need to change their skill, technology, learn this technology. Because when CTR, MRI changes, they need to understand the new technology. That's why engineers need to update. That means to say that reskill and upskill to the changed phase of the technology, otherwise we will become a big zero. With these words, I thank the organizers for having given me an opportunity to share a few of my thoughts with regards to the education for industry 4.0 revolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for briefing us the need of education for industry 4.0 and also to share the preparedness of our university in enabling our students to be ready for Industry 4.0. As Sadhguru says, teaching should not be a profession, it must be a passion. Only then, an education move from imposition of facts to exploration of truth. Our today's resource person is a man of passion in the field of education who is bringing a lot of transformational exploration of truth in his students and our university by implementing a lot of new initiatives. Let me introduce our today's resource person, Dr. B. Sadashiva Gauda. Sir has obtained his bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering in 1986 from the AIT Chikamangaluru University of Mysore. Obtained ME in Refrigeration and Air Conditioning from Coimbatore Institute of Engineering, Coimbatore in 1992 with GATE stipend. Obtained PhD in Thermal Science in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in 1997. After completing PhD in 1997, he worked in RINAC, India Limited as Product Development Manager for three years. Later, he worked as a faculty and head of engineering at the American 
degree program of Tainas University in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia from 1999 to 2007. He was given the Excellence Award in 2004 by Tainas University for his academic excellence. He joined Vidya Vadaka College of Engineering as a Professor of Mechanical Engineering in June 2007 and later he has become Head of Mechanical Engineering. He was promoted to Vice Principal in 2008 and Principal in May 2010. He has published over 50 papers in conferences and international journals. He is a Fellow Institute of Engineers and a Life Member of uh, ISHRAE and ISTE. He is a member of uh, Academic Council of many engineering colleges of VTU. He is instrumental in getting NBA and NAC accreditation and autonomous status to VVCE. He is currently the Dean of Faculty of Engineering VTU. With this brief introduction of our today's resource person, and I hand over the dais to him. Honorable Executive Council members, the academic senate members and the regional director, Professor Reda Kamurti, and all the distinguished professors and also professors who have joined in the online world. Our honorable vice chancellor has made my job simpler because he has explained the importance of education so that we prepare the candidates for industry 4.0. So let, this is my presentation flow. Education, let us understand the purpose of education because all of us are involved in education. Then industry 4.0 uh, let me, I will begin with industry 1.0 and then move to industry 1.4.0. Already industry 5.0 is taking a shape. Then education for industry 4.0. What is that? As faculty members of a prestigious university, what we can do so that we can meet, we can prepare our students for industry 4.0 or even 5.0. Then coming to the education, all of us need to understand already many quotations have been said about education. Maybe I stand here. Is the collapse of education is the collapse of the nation. So if the education system fails in our country, the nation will collapse. So this is the importance education gets. So all of us need to understand that as faculty members, if you fail in our duty, I don't think the nation will be united for too long a period. We have seen the collapse of many countries in, around the world. It is because of lack of education system in those countries. So it is very important that we are importing or we are into that profession where we are building the nation. So all of us need to be proud of this noble profession because we are the backbone of our country. The second, Swami Vivekananda has said, a nation is advanced in proportion to education and intelligence spread among the masses. We want everyone to get educated not just a few who pursue engineering or professional courses, everyone, every individual in the country must be educated properly. For that, teachers play a vital role. And we are the teachers. And Vivekananda also said, education is not filling the mind with a lot of facts. In engineering in, in particular, we teach them many things which are fact-based and a lot of facts. For example, our Anul Vice Chancellor has said that let us give equations to the first year students. Let them not remember the facts. Let them remember how to apply those equations in real scenario. 
we have taken a step in the right direction so that we will be able to understand and appreciate the importance of education and its application. And being in the professional field, because engineering is a professional course, it is all about doing, it is not about teaching, preaching, it is all about doing what our students can do when they join the industry. So do we do all those things, we will discuss in a while. Then, what is the purpose of education? We have a purpose, we are gathered here, there is a purpose to understand what is industry 4.0 and how we can educate our students so that they meet the industry 4.0. That is the purpose. So similarly, in the broader sense, education, purpose, to gain knowledge and skills to make a living. All of us, we get educated so that we get a good job. Ultimately, to make a living out of that, what we learn. That is the primary motto, motive of getting the education. That is number one. Number two, to create knowledge and tools that benefit the society. As engineers, we solve the problems of the society. We create many tools. You can take software tools, you can take mechanical things, electrical things. Many things are designed, manufactured, and tested, and put into service and used by the engineers in the beginning, and then only it is given to the society. So, we create knowledge. So, every university, every one of us should create knowledge. Also that we are doing that, we are doing a great service as a faculty. So we must create knowledge and tools that benefit the society, which is very important. Then to contribute to peace and harmony in the society. Because our behaviors, our attitude will be important to our student community. The way we respond to certain questions in the classrooms. The way we behave in the public, they all definitely help to shape the society in the right direction. Also, that all the faculty members, all the teachers from the school till higher education behave responsibly with right attitude. We can create a much, much better society. Are we doing that? We have to question. All of us are responsible. So, are we creating peace? within the institute and also within our student community and also within the society. That is very important as teachers because ultimately we are building, we are the building blocks of our nation. Then to prepare our student to face challenges of life, there are many challenges. We have seen many students facing many problems. It may be related to their personal issues or the problems from the family or within the institute, within the university, there are problems. Do we address those issues as our own issues because they are our children? Do we treat them as our own children? Which is very important. The moment we start treating them, the situation changes dramatically. Because the moment you say, okay, I am ready to solve your problem. I understand. I empathize. The moment we start using certain words, it will have a dramatic effect. It is what I believe. It is not teaching from the mind. We must teach also from the heart. Do we do day in and day out? Which is important. So, to prepare our students to face challenges, there are usually now and then the challenges are dynamic. Challenges are new. The challenges that we face as students, those challenges are not there today. The challenges are completely different. Many a time we fail to understand the problems or the agony they go through. Because we are not faced. So how do we prepare such generations to meet the industry requirements? And finally, all of us get educated basically to lead a happier life. 
which is important. That should be the ultimate goal of education. So do we do that as teachers? And let us come to the industry 1.0 to through 4.0. What is industry 1.0? All of us are familiar. The invention of steam engine where water and steam was the main source of energy. That is the industrial revolution. Earlier to that, it happened in the year 1760 to 1840. The first industrial revolution, as I mentioned, water and steam. It was a shift from agrarian and handicraft economy to the one dominated by machinery. It started, even though it started in the United Kingdom, during that period, it moved to Europe and USA and many other countries later. So, in this industry 1.0, many, you know, they were using thousands, lakhs of laborers to do certain things, but that got reduced. In every industry revolution you see, the manpower requirement got reduced, but the skill requirement got increased. So, and the important industry that affected in the industry 1.0, one is the textile industry because that was a major industry in the United Kingdom. They used to get cotton from India and manufacture clothes in UK. Mining industry because they were producing iron because mining was very, very important than agriculture, transportation. So what is the observation? It reduced the manpower requirement because of industrial revolution 1.0. Then if you look at the industry 2.0, almost one century later, the industrial revolution 2.0 occurred, that is 1870 to 1914, and then the main reason was the invention of electricity. Because of invention of electricity, rather than using steam and water, they were able to transfer the electrical energy from to the different places. As a result, the industry was set up all over the countries, wherever they wanted because it, was, it became easy to transfer the electrical energy and the mass production became very common because of electrical energy and the assembly line and also during that time IC engines were invented. And coming to the industry 3.0, if you see, it happened 1970 to the 2010, it is the third industrial revolution, basically the transistor, PLCs, computer systems, all changed the way industry worked, dramatically changed. And if you look at the software systems, uh, software systems have integrated manufacturing systems, then, uh, you know, many things were made automatic, semi-automatic, wherever it was possible, it was automatic, otherwise at least semi-automatic. And if you look at the industry 4.0, we are into industry 4.0 now. And it, this have started in the year 2011 and it is going on. Lot of changes that are happening because of industrial IoT. The, the components in the industry, they can talk to each other now. We don't need human intervention. Because many things, even in Mysore, we visited one factory which manufactures lubricant oil. Earlier there used to be it seems, 100 employees, now only 2 employees. They are completely made automatic, not only that, it, you know, it is completely managed by someone who sits in Europe. They don't even sit here. You can imagine the kind of automation that has happened in the industry. And if you look at the industry 5.0, more automation will happen. So, do we prepare our student community to face such challenges? The seamless integration of industrial IoT with everything from analytics to AI to IT, because there are many things they can take decisions on their own. They don't need human beings to take the decisions. That is happening in the industry already. And it will aggravate, it will increase. And the smart machines are increasingly autonomous. They are able to self-monitor and communicate without human intervention. And this is happening. So, this is very important that as 
engineering faculty or MBA faculty or MCA faculty, it is very important that we provide the required knowledge to our students. We skill them so that they will be able to face the changes that are happening in the industry. Now, let us look at the overall features of industry 1.0 to 4.0. What are the main features if you look? One is knowledge creation seamlessly happens. There is so much of knowledge creation that is happening in the industry. And if you compare with institutes, I don't think we are creating so much of knowledge, which is very important. Second, automation at every stage. Automation is the order of the day. There is so much of automation that is happening in the industry. Why? One is they can increase the productivity. Second, they can increase the accuracy, precision, and they don't need to depend on the human beings for each and everything. Because you know, very difficult to get skilled persons in the society today. The developed countries continue to dominate. You look at Japan, UK, Germany. They are extremely good at it. Why they are good at it? Why we are not good at it? And many of our engineers after graduation, they work for those companies and they become extraordinary. But somehow, in India, we are not able to produce you know, OEMs, the way Germany, the way Japan or South Korea or USA have been producing for years. I think we have to question ourselves all these things. The skilled and manpower requirement increased exponentially. It is not that, you just imagine when we were students, how many engineering colleges were there in the state of Karnataka or in the state of, in, the country, in our country, very few. In Karnataka, maybe 20, 30 engineering colleges. There, there, it was difficult to get jobs, but now it is very easy to get jobs. It means what? There is no depth of opportunity for skilled manpower. There is huge opportunity. That is one thing all of us need to understand. So it means that skill is going to be the very important prerequisite for job opportunities. Then, does the skilled engineers requirement reduce? The answer is no. There has been increase. How many engineers we produce in Karate? Something like 80,000 to 1 lakh engineers we produce every year. Almost all would get jobs. May, they may not get immediately. Industries say that, you know, only 20% or 30% or whatever the number they may say are employable. What about the rest? They may get underpaid. They may not get the job that they want to get. Who is responsible for that? I think all of us are collectively responsible. If someone is unemployable, even though opportunities are there, then I think indirectly we are responsible. Now, if you look at the education in India, just to put all of us in a right perspective, if you look at the edu education in India, this is the Nalanda University. All of us are familiar with And when was it? 427 to 1197 Christian era existed in Bihar and if you look at one of the earliest universities of India and it had 2000 teachers approximately 10,000 students from all over the world and they were teaching almost everything from engineering to medicine and everything including Buddhism everything was taught and look at the Students faculty ratio. It is one is to five. For every five students, there have, there was one faculty in those times because of Gurukula system. Let us look at another university, the the first and the oldest university. It existed 600 BC to 500 AD, and now of course the world's first university the kingdom of Gandhara in Rawalpindi district of Pakistan today. Okay, if you look, they taught 68 subjects. You just imagine 2500 years ago, they taught six, 68 subjects. And even Kautilya, okay, Kautilya Arthasastra from that university. 
you know there there are masterpieces vishnu sharma panini and they also had more than 10000 students not just from indian subcontinent even from china greece many other countries students used to attend the university program it means why why i brought this issue is that you know we were actually extremely extraordinary suddenly you know we have we some of we have given up we did not sustain even though once upon a time almost all other countries were nomadics they had no university like this in those periods and we were so good means what i am trying to say is that we have the ability that needs to be developed we have to reinforce ourselves that we have the capacity we can produce anything and everything that other countries developed countries that are doing what happened okay sorry and let us look at the gaps between the industry 4.0 and the present education system because we want our education system to meet the requirements of industry 4.0 now what are the what let us understand the gaps if you look at the gaps industry it is interconnected thousands of devices work together in harmony now when you do the automation hundreds of components they work together we in engineering we are branch specific we have, i do mechanical engineering we do electrical and we don't even hardly interact with one another recently we had an nba visit to our institute they asked they went to the basic science and they asked physics and chemistry faculty members how often you interact with engineering faculty do you go to coffee together we don't have the habit of do you discuss okay i am doing this thermal conductivity problem using this material can i do for a variety of materials do you demonstrate all those things to the student do you discuss with mechanical engineering faculty what are the possibilities how i can vary some of these things so that it becomes the application oriented because students they hesitate to study physics and chemistry in the first year why they don't see its application in the respective engineering profession can you show that while they are in the first semester itself so in order to do that we need to interact with concerned branch faculty do we do that in the automation when missions can interact with one another and take appropriate decision why not we otherwise how do you meet the industry requirements can it is not possible we cannot work in silos even the mba faculty mca faculty need to work with other faculty members engineering faculty is an opportunity how many how often we go to medical profession and interact with them and find what are the problem they are facing and what solutions we can provide to them agricultural university traditional university we don't do it as a system we believe that it is not my job so then how we can meet industry requirements it is impossible so it is very important that we interact number one with our own colleagues within the department how to make how to enrich the curriculum so that it meets the industry the second interact with other faculty members from other branches of engineering possible other institutions other professions the moment we start doing it remember our knowledge increases the number of applications keep increasing that's what in america people do every student interacts with other branch students they by their knowledge gets enhanced other one applications industry is full of applications and what is that we are very high on theory low on applications the applications are limited the moment the application the see as a student why should i attend your class if i don't see any benefits out of it i attend your class just to for attendance no 
I must attend voluntarily because every time I attend, my knowledge gets enhanced. I see applications of that around me. The more and more applications are shown to the students in the classroom, the classroom should become a should become an industry. It should act like an industry. So then they show a lot of interest. Then hands on with strong fundamentals. You look at the industry, the way when you design something, they are very good at fundamentals. They know. They work in a team. Somebody may be very good in software, other one may be good in mechanical system design, other one may be materials. They form a team and work together so that they can create a new product, new item. They can, that can solve the problems of the industry. But do we do that? We don't do it. We don't form teams. Even in our classes, when you give a project, how do we do it? Many times students, on their own, they select the team. Do we do it scientifically so that everyone gets, you know, their knowledge gets enhanced? Then knowledge creation happens in the industry. If you look, we are good at knowledge dissemination. If you want university colleges to meet the industry requirements, I believe knowledge creation should happen in the institutes. Then absolutely. We will be so much rich with respect to knowledge and industry would want to hire our students. That should happen. Then, finally, we all talk about outcome-based education as per NEP 2020. And also when the NBA team visits, we say that we are following outcome-based education. Do we follow it in letter and spirit? Where, for example, there are 12 outcomes. In the engineering, there are six outcomes in the MBA. I think similarly MCA, there are 12 outcomes, program outcomes. Do we map on my content what I teach to those outcomes? How I have I, I how I am imparting knowledge? Do I teach only at the remember level or understanding level? Do I go to the apply level, analysis level in my teaching? When I give assignments to my students, how do I do it? Do I meet all the POs in my course? May not be possible. At least four POs, five POs. Do I encourage them to talk to one another? Improve their communication skill. Our Vice Chancellor was mentioning that communication is, skill is very, very important for our students. Interpersonal skill is important. How do we encourage those things in our classrooms. We Many a time what we do, we hire people to do those things. Can we not import on our own, okay, form a team, do this, give the presentations. There are many ways where we can make the classrooms active. Now what is happening many a time, it is passive. It is teacher-centered learning, uh, teacher-centered Teaching is that learning process rather than student-centered. Outcome base says that it has to be student-centered. It is not possible. Next, if you look at how to make students industry ready, 4.0. I have got a few more slides. If there are any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, I, would, I will continue. Are there any questions? Okay. Now, if you how to make students industry 4.0, I have mentioned a few. I would like to emphasize number one is the curriculum. The most important is curriculum should be up to date. Now how do you make the curriculum up to date? That is the question. We have board of studies. Do we have industry experts who are knowledgeable about the existing curriculum? And also what is that they need in the industry? And as a faculty, we must survey the curriculum of other universities. You, you look at Stanford University, look at Purdue University, look at MIT. What is the curriculum they are practicing or following? It could be the for MBA program. Look at Harvard University. What is their curriculum? Why they stand out? Why not we? The most important the cornerstone for success is curriculum. 
curricula should be so rich students look forward to attend the classes that the how should be the curricula one industry content the content has to be relevant to the industry so at least one module let us say you have five modules you can have one module something related where students go to the industry and work or industry person comes and delivers that content why not we need to collaborate with industry if you want to meet industry 4.0 requirements then industry visits collaborate with industries take them to the industries if possible may not be possible for all the courses may not be possible for all the mba programs but let me tell you in every course if you invest time it is possible it is very much possible then internships even one day internship is good you have to have okay if you if you do two day internship i will give you five hours let them go and see the industry let's say i am teaching thermodynamics i must identify the industry that are related to thermodynamics maybe some 10 15 industry i must write to them this is the subject i am teaching can you help me to design the curriculum can you help me to provide internship can you help me to give technical talks they are ready to help us even though they are busy they definitely help us provided we approach them the initiative has to happen from our end then many projects see that student do many projects why they start applying what they study without projects we talk about project based learning problem based learning which is very very important in engineering profession we must have as many projects as possible even two three even you can have a course entirely filled with projects there is absolutely nothing wrong because the learning will be exponential rather than what they study and then uh, you know after the exam in the more more or less they forget if they do hands on experiential learning happens then what they learn a lot then there are many online platform for example for the first year we have done the mapping with the springboard of infosys we have lnt we have coursera you should study okay guys this is the subject for this topic you do this course which is online which is free springboard has 5000 to 6000 courses online which are freely available do we do the mapping of all our courses to those there are many other platform that are free for student community assume that we do it i tell them you know at least maybe 20% 30% of the students might explore before that we also should do you can also explore it to nptel courses map it to them guys give it the module one you go here give the assignments from that you have already done that course you know its content you can say that if you do this course you get 10 marks that flexibility is there in the system you have to avail of it of course the work will be more for the faculty if you want to meet industry 4.0 requirements faculty are very very important they need to work more then so this curriculum whatever the curriculum you design see that they are also mapped to the pos of course cos and all you do it but pos are ultimately you have to attain the pos whether they are something related to engineer and society whether it related to ethics when you do project talk about ethics when you do internship talk about the ethics okay you went to the industry at this time you came back but you have written this is that right wherever possible in the four year program or two year program we have to ensure that all the pos are attained not in the paper in actually they will must attain next in order to do this as i repeated i i keep repeating this faculty play a vital role faculty is very very important and you will have lot of issues i know that 
But to overcome all these, you have to be self-motivated. Self-motivated means, even though somebody says something wrong, you cannot lose the self-motivation. Because unless we are self-motivated, how can we inspire our students? They will not be able to inspire them. So all the faculty members should inspire students, not just teach. We must inspire them. They should love to talk to us. They should love to share their issues, problems with us. Such conducive ambience need to be created between the faculty and the students. So, the most important, according to me, the important quality all of us need to have day in and day out is self-motivation. Self-motivation is very critical. Whatever may be the situation outside, it may be completely negative, but we cannot be negative. Because assume that I am negative, I, you know, I spoil 60 students in my class. Their mood depends on my mood. Imagine, they are our own children. It is going to affect their life significantly. So, self-motivation is important. Second, industry institute connect is important. Industry institute connect means faculty has to visit industries. Whatever the subject, at least every semester you must visit two or three industries. Understand the process. Come and share. Bring them to the classroom. I have made one rule in, um, uh, um, in BBC that every week there should be one alumni interact with every class. Because when their seniors are in a good position interact with them, they get inspired. So I also should become like them one day. So we need to facilitate many things. So it is not just teaching, much beyond teaching. Then live projects. Try to do as many live projects as possible. It could be MBA, MCA. See that you do a lot of projects. Give them. They enjoy doing it. Because engineering is all about doing. It is not about teaching. Simulations. There are many simulations. You can use MATLAB or many other softwares. Many things, many wonders can be done. Students understand better. For the first time, we have introduced the to teach mathematics. We are using MATLAB or other softwares. So it is very important. Many students like it because we need to see them. We we want them to understand its applications of mathematics. Many times we don't see the applications. And now mathematics is made branch specific. It is even better. So they understand where this mathematics is applied in mechanical engineering, electronics engineering. It has to be done. And other part is research. As a faculty, all of us need to understand students. And also need to do at least read one or two papers. What is happening in my profession? Once in a month or once in a fortnight, one or two papers. We have actually Professor Surab, or some of you might know, the former director of IIT Roper and also former Vice Chancellor. He comes to our institute uh, uh, five days in a month. And uh, yesterday I met him. You know, it was 7 p.m. He was still working in our institute. Nobody was there. He was working alone. And he told me yesterday evening that he lives in Bangalore and also he is a professor emeritus at National Institute of Advanced Studies in Indian Institute of Science, next to IAC, if you know him. And even Sundays he goes to the National Institute of Advanced Studies and is another person, he was him, Jack, such as Jai Raja, Professor Zurampa, where did he go today, last Sunday? And he said, I went to my office. Even on Sundays. That is the fact. I don't say that that is, you know, he is a researcher basically. But we must, we must do some research as faculty members. Otherwise, knowledge creation will not happen. Then, knowledge of student profile, which is very important. Let me tell you, this is very critical to make 
what you do, what you teach, understand the students. Unless I know the profile of my students, whether they have come from rural areas or urban areas, what is their background, how much mark they have scored in the plus two or in the previous semester, what is their grade, what subject they like, what they want to become. Unless I know the profile, I don't think I will be able to do justice to them. So, which is very important that we understand our students. Whatever the class I teach, I must know everyone by name if possible. Number two, I must know their background, their interests. The moment you say, hey, you like hockey, you know, whatever you tell, that guy starts liking you because you identified his special interest. So that's the way you can make them know. I just remember, uh, you know, a few years back, I used to teach thermodynamics for my uh, lateral entry students. I took it as a challenge. Because normally, you know, in thermodynamics, uh, people who teach, you know, results will be less. And that to a lateral entry student join one month or two months after the start of the third semester. So I, I decided that I said, there were 63 students in the lateral entry to our institute that year. And in thermodynamics, now the result used to be 50, 60, 70 percent. Even though I was the, I, then also I was the principal, I taught, I got 100 percent result. Not that, you know, what I did, I ensured that they give presentation every week. One extra hour I used to take, they give presentation. I used to appreciate them a lot. Hey, you have done very well. In the first round, all the 63 gave two times presentations. I gave a topic. They started liking. The moment they stopped liking me, they will like my subject. First, we have to create that impression. First, we need to love them. Then whatever you tell, they follow. So, we need to maintain a very good relationship between the faculty and which is very critical to make them understand what we teach. The moment they don't like me, well, I may be an extraordinary teacher, they may appreciate, yet they may not listen to me. If you want to change their behavior, change their character, it is very important that they stop liking us first. So I normally do that. So the profile of the students is very important so that they listen to us. Whatever you tell, go and do internship, visit this industry, talk to this person, talk to this alumni, they will follow. Then, pedagogy and assessments. Remember, whenever you do the pedagogy, that is how you teach effectively within the classroom. Lot of planning is required. You cannot take lectures for granted. Every hour we must prepare very well and go and deliver if you want it to be inspired. Otherwise, it will not be so inspiring. They just listen. We become ordinary teachers. Now, what is that? I will talk on that more. If you look at, I think a couple of years ago, Mission 10X was there, by conducted by Vipur. They used to tell how you should deliver the lecture in one hour. They call it micro-teaching. What you should do in the first five minutes, what you should do in the next 20 minutes, what you should do after that, and how to react. It is like a speech. Every lecture is like a speech. You have the first few minutes, you have to connect, you have to talk about what you have done in the previous class or tell something interesting. They get motivated. You can tell, narrate a story. Then tell them what you are going to teach. Teach one or two concepts only at a time. After 10 minutes, we started implementing in our institute reflective teaching. What is that? After 20 minutes, they should give, they should pause for one minute. Let the student recollect what we have taught and then write it down. And then they will think, pair and share. There are many techniques. There are more than 100 to 150 methods of teaching. All of us need to apply at least in every class 5 to 10 methods. Then the classes will be interesting. Otherwise, assume that every faculty enters and then arrives, delivers and goes. You imagine the fate of our student community. So you have to use multiple methods so that you cater to the needs of all the students. So 
we we do that reflective breathing has helped at least they can breathe they will have some breathing space then remember what has been taught and then tell and share with others allow them to discuss allow them to use mobile phones if you are using some cyber and and many other methods it is good nothing wrong in that as long as learning is happening in the class if no learning is happening you may be teaching then how do you make the industry 4.0 it is not possible then early feedback and counseling is very important many a time you want to be very good very humble students are not what we should do lot of counseling is required talk to them in person call that someone is talking what i do normally i call it to my chamber i said hey what is the problem i know you have some problem the moment you start telling showing concern empathy their their behavior changes we we are also like that assume that your boss calls you and hey what is the problem any can I, may i help you your your behavior towards your boss changes so we need to show that take early feedback normally what we do in our institute we take early feedback in the third week itself so that i know whether i am teaching good or bad what corrective measures i need to take for the next remaining 14 weeks or 13 weeks all these are important we have to do certain things very religiously because you will see the results otherwise results will not be there you may get 100% results that is not important what is important whether you are able to impact with your presence in the classroom that is very important that one hour lecture you give work to the students your one hour if you deliver they should go home and work for two hours that's what happens in usa even here but you may say that they will not do it encourage the students who do it then that number keeps growing you can give me any task in my class i see that those things are done not by force with lot of love that need to be cultivated in the classroom from day one so the moment they start working on what you have given let me tell you learning will happen not within the classroom even outside the classrooms that should happen then we made industry 4.0 because industry 4.0 is continuous learning it is not learning just for the sake of examination doing which is not there in the curriculum you should give as many assignments as possible that are outside the curriculum so though they start thinking differently then appropriate assessment tools use there are variety of assessment tools not one or two i used to conduct quizzes in every class first five minutes i would conduct quizzes you may say that where is the time to do the value i what i would do okay you take yours sometimes i would i used to tell them that you only do the valuation this is the answer do the valuation so i teach them how to assess second time you give it to your neighbor let them do the valuation in five minutes i would get all the 60 scripts value see there are many techniques and you need to trust them most important trust you believe in them that they are learning check once in a while whether that that is happening or not then conducive fair transparency be fair with every student which is very important they may do wrong i always tell in my college students can be wrong not the faculty faculty can be wrong not the hod hod can be wrong not the principal we cannot commit mistakes as you go higher and higher number of mistakes you commit has to be as less as possible you have to be humane you have to be transparent you have to be fair otherwise they don't have faith in the system most important is the trust in the system is very important Okay, if I don't get justice here, I will get justice there. Assume that they have that confidence. Many a time I get emails directly from my students. Then I tell the HODs, I tell the faculty, this, this is the problem we have in this class. 
they can walk into my chamber any time see when you when something is not right there is nothing wrong in accepting that magnanimity we must have as teachers if I am wrong ok I will correct it if they are right I am wrong I should correct myself I cannot say that I don't make mistakes so that transparency fair need to be there in the system then what happens learning is happening everywhere not within the classroom even outside the classrooms and they start learning respecting the faculty and there will be a lot of faith in the system and finally I conclude one is industry 4.0 requires skilled engineers skilled engineers who can add value they don't want engineers who does not add value they must add value to what is there in the system they must be knowledge creators not knowledge disseminators which is very important as engineers number two right curriculum very important all of us are responsible to produce right curriculum effective delivery every class is important we cannot ignore every class every class we have to go with full preparation also that you want to deliver one hour lecture at least 8 to 10 hours of preparation is required if you do it systematically otherwise you know it will not be very inspiring effective delivery fair assessments industry exposure are the key to the success we must expose our student community to the industry industry standards industry experts bring technical uh, technical person to the institute as many technical person as possible you get also consultancy the more collaboration you have with industry they start believing in you and then they start giving projects then faculty are the change makers faculty play a pivotal role in bridging the gaps if there are gaps between the industry and the academia remember we are at fault not the industry if there is a gap if the students are not up to the mark again faculty are at fault we cannot blame the industry so we need to bridge that gap so faculty play an important role in bridging the gap between the industry and the academia so it is very really important that we play a major role in that and if there are any questions and answers I welcome and also I have said the nation depends on us so we must be hurry on almost every area technical competency we should be very good communication we should be very good value system we should be very good thereby they emulate us students should emulate us they should look up to us then why we will not be able to produce engineers who meet industry requirement rather they exceed the industry expectations so with this if there are any questions I open the floor for questions and answers What are the risks of poetry? Sorry, sir. What are the risks? So the risks is basically number one, number of jobs gets reproduced. Because it is automation. But according to me, when I interacted with many industry experts, including Cisco, Intel, they say that they need more engineers skilled manpower so what is important we need to have skilled engineers we need to have up-to-date curriculum that meets industry expectations and the engineers should be buildable from day one so if they are buildable from day one it means that the final year in engineering they must have the industry attention they must understand so it may not be possible to provide internship to all the students but they must work in a variety of fields then they will be able to meet of course quality engineers are required and India supplies engineers to the entire world I don't see any uh, 
the bleak prospects for engineering graduates in India or outside also. Only thing is what is what is required the passion for them to learn, passion for them to understand, adapt. You must have core values. See, according to me, the core values we must have as faculties, adaptability. Every now and then, for students change. Right? I should be able to adapt to their new set of students quickly and bridge the gap between me and the students. So, adapt. Similarly, students as they graduate, they go to industry, they see as completely a new scenario. The adaptability. So, we must train them on those things. The second meta skill is required is communication. We should make them extraordinary in communication. In every class, a lot of discussion should happen. You should earmark 10-15 minutes for discussion and encourage everyone to speak up, which is very important. Because the moment, you see, you look at America, they are not great, but what is in the great, they are good at communication. They are good at converting a patent into a product. We are not good. We are good at patenting, but we are not good at converting that patent into a commercial viable product. We are weak. Why? We don't believe in that. We don't believe in our own capacity. So that is the threat actually. The not believing in ourselves is a threat to uh, producing very good engineers and to meet the industry expectations. Yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for enlightening us on Industry 4.0. helping us to come out of the mediocrity. Uh, some sort of discomfort in the uh, syllabus trainings. So my uh, suggestion is why can't we take help of the industry people at, at least to set up one or two models like what is their requirement that we can adopt from the industry. That's my first point. And the second thing is I, uh, I want the uh, students to be trained on attitude kind of thing. We want one at least uh, 20 marks or uh, 50 marks to be allotted for that aptitude kind of uh, training. Uh, that is my request. Uh, Thank you, madam. Uh, coming to the first question, see, already the video has, uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor has very clearly stated that you must have as many industry experts as possible in the design of the curriculum. We have. The thing is, we have to identify the right industry experts. All industry experts may not be good at designing and giving the right curriculum. They must be, maybe for example, they may be already, they were faculty, they understand the requirements and then they move to the industry. Or in the industry itself, they are into design of curriculum. Okay, then if you identify such people and give your suggestion, okay, this person is very good, why don't you include? And then we, are, we will definitely accept and see that they are included. That's number one. Number two, let us say you you have industry exposure. Let's say we we in our institute what we have done. We, I told every faculty to have industry immersion program. Every faculty at least a week or a month must spend in the industry, relevant industry. See, this is very important. See, rather than blaming somebody, what is that we are contributing as a faculty? Now. Industry input is very much required. What is we should be magnanimous to accept it. Okay, when they give inputs. <coughs> Sometimes we are not prepared to teach those courses or modules. Then we may we may not agree, no, this is too tough, not required. So we should be able to learn those new topics. Maybe we can call the industry experts. I don't know this topic, please teach us. Absolutely nothing wrong. Because there are many topics that we cannot be good at. What we should do, we should collaborate. We should collaborate with industries. Identify the top 10 industries in your field, in your subject. Bring them. This is the curriculum. Send it to the board of studies. We will definitely accept it. Okay, that is to your answer to your question about. Number two, the behavior and attitude. Uh, remember, uh, regarding the aptitude. Yes. See, the aptitude things you have to set questions in your curriculum itself in such a way that they also pick up aptitude. It is possible. Look at the gate question papers, example. 
you can say okay guys you i spent 10 minutes every day to teach you aptitude you can do separately but assume that your every faculty is teaching aptitude in their class for 5 to 10 minutes don't you think the situation changes see there are many things like communication skills cannot be learned overnight similarly aptitude cannot be taught in one one week or two weeks it takes time there are students who cannot understand they are slow learners we need to understand their point of view also so assume that every day i hear mark 10 grenades to teach you this firstly i also learn secondly i teach my students they know me because I am doing giving something other than what I am required to give. So, for example, in private institute, what they do, they hire people to teach. In government institutions, as a faculty, you should take up that responsibility. It is my duty to prepare my students holistically. See, everything has to be holistic. It cannot be only technical competency. Only if you have one competency. You will not survive in this world today. You have to have multiple competencies. So, earlier in IAS and all, only you are a very good researcher, it's fine. But in a university like this, you have to be good in many areas. You should know how to teach very well, you should know how to do research, you should know how to communicate, you should also visit industries. Many factors are important in this competitive world, assume that we start doing, the student will follow. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, since from we are talking about the uh, industry, many students will be like, but still it is not happening after a lot of changes in syllabus. What is the remedy for this? Sir, remedy according to me is the B. Collectively, we are responsible to make the change. As I mentioned, faculty are the change makers. We must update our knowledge. We must do research. We must involve why it is not possible. Assume that I teach 60 students, I must change their behavior. I must change their attitude. I must change their technical competency. I must resolve myself that I am going to do it. Not easy, but it is possible. It is possible. So, all of us are collectively responsible. We cannot blame anybody, sir. According to me, if I do my duty sincerely, honestly, it is going to benefit a few. It is good enough. I cannot change the world. If I am able to change a couple of students, couple of my uh, colleagues, it is enough. As long as we do that, on a continual basis without expecting any return from them. Many a time what happens? We have to, I have done so much, but there is no return. You cannot do that. In this society, you should do what you are required to do. Leave the other thing to be God. If it has to come back, it will come back in some other way at the later stage. And it will come back. I can guarantee you it will come back, but not immediately. So we should be we should be able to energize ourselves as I have mentioned, self-motivated. Second, we should also energize others who are around us, which is important. All other things leave it automatically. Assume that we are more and more change makers. I tell you one incident, one uh, story. We sent our students to Stanford University to do a workshop on design thinking. The purpose is we sent only four or five. And they come back and they are supposed to share their experiences. When they came back first time, they trained all the faculty members on design thinking workshop. I also attended, which was conducted by our students. Because they learned something new there, they came back and said, they refined their knowledge. And we also understood what is going on at Stanford University. Also, that you encourage more and more such events, we are right now we have more than 40 clubs. As a result, you can see the ambience in the institute itself is completely different. Why? Because we promote that. It began with a small club, now it is quite big. So sometimes the results will come after some time. 
you have to wait. But I feel the answer is all of us are responsible directly or indirectly. After many attempts, uh, many syllabus changes also, we are unable to produce MSAD. You are right. Sir, we, see, engineers are good with all this, with all this. More or more or less all the engineers, engineering graduates that are produced by VTU get employed. They may not get the job immediately. After six months they get trained somewhere and they get employment. It is happening. But the thing is if you want it to happen at an accelerated pace, our contribution has to be significant. It has to be significant. The work, as soon as you are doing VX now, it has to be 10 times X. Then it happens. A particular feedback from the student that whatever they studied in the publication, that is going to be not helpful in the engineering. Yeah. They said that in the industry is different perspective. They, they took up only the particular point of view. But yeah. we thought it is going to be in a multidimensional way. In that yeah. way, how the students are going to be helpful with the industry ready way. How to make it an industry ready, that is the question. You are right. See, what we have to do, we have to do, all of us need to do research. If you want to meet the industry 4.0 or 5.0, what is the need? We have to do a lot of research. Research means not just from 10 to 5. We may have to spend extra hours, such as like Professor Surapa, who spends even on Sundays. Then let me tell you, we will be able to create knowledge create new components, industry will come to us and the students who work under us, they will become industry ready. So the only way is knowledge creation. Knowledge creation should happen from the faculty, every one of us, in one or other way. Then yes, we meet industry 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, whatever, we'll be able to meet those requirements. Yes sir. Yeah. yeah, any question? No. See the chat box. So, uh, if there are no, yeah, please, sir. Sir, you mentioned that faculties are change makers. Uh, sir, apart from NPTEL and MOOC, uh, it's a best platform. Can you tell another, some more platform to enhance our knowledge? Uh, sir, one is, is uh, we have Springboard. Springboard. Yes, it is completely free. And uh, in fact, uh, VTU signed an MOU with uh, Infosys Springboard. There are 6,000 courses that are available. And it is completely free. All of us can avail. You can do as many courses as you wish. And also you can enjoy, uh, encourage students to do those courses. Where they are very helpful. The other one is, of course, you have Coursera, Upgrad, but they are not free. They are not free. But there are many other platforms that could be used. Maybe you can also, in case a lot of faculty are interested, the MOU can be signed with those uh, platforms also, so that they offer one or two courses. During the COVID period, in fact, uh, I also did a couple of courses on Coursera and it was free then. But now they are charged. Thank you, So, if there are no questions, uh, I would like to thank each one of you and also thank uh, the VTU for this opportunity to share my views on education for Industry 4.0. And uh, thank you once again. Thank you very much, sir, for educating us about the industrial revolutions and to remind us about how good ancient Indian universities were. Sir, you have motivated us to focus towards Industry 4.0 and to orient us, and you have oriented us about knowledge creation in line with Industry 4.0 and also to disseminate the same. Sir, you have taught us how to be a magnanimous faculty to build the future of the nation. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I request of Sakushpula Taiyas to deliver a word of thanks. Good afternoon, Manita. It's my immense pleasure to propose a word of thanks. I thank our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. S. Vidya Shankar, sir, for supporting this event and presiding over the program today. Thank you very much, sir. 
I would like to thank our beloved sister, Dr. B. Rakaswamy, for his continuous support in honing the skills of all the faculties. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our registered evaluation, Dr. T. N. Srinivasa and Finance Officer, Mrs. M. A. Sapna Ma'am, for supporting this event. Thank you, sir, and thank you, ma'am. I thank our today's resource person, Dr. B. Sadashami Gowda, Dean ETU and Principal of VBC Mysuru, for having readily accepted our invitation and for deliberating a wonderful lecture. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our regional director, Dr. T.P. Renuka Purti, who was the idea behind the lecture series. Thank you, sir. I extended my sincere thanks to all the principals of various colleges for supporting this program and for sending their faculties to this program and make their faculties to attend online. Thank you all the principals and delegates. This program would not have been made possible without the support of Pradha Vidyu Organizing Committee. I thank all the members of the continuous effort. Thank you all. I thank all the special officers, program coordinators, teaching and non-teaching staffs of VDU, Mysore for making this event a grand success. Thank you one and all. Former United States Senator Harvard Ralph Cohn, who is an educator best known for his advocacy of progressive alternative education, says that one of the beauties of teaching is that there is no limit to one's growth as a teacher. With this note, I wish all the very best for our learning under the banner of Pragna with you. Thank you, Maradol.